Welcome back to Jacob B. Rising. The time has finally arrived, Dead Space fans. I have been contacting Tanya Clark for about three months now, and we finally got around to doing the interview. I had a great time interviewing her, just like Gunna Wright. She's very down to earth, very lovely to talk to, and I had a blast with the interview. I asked her a diverse series of questions ranging from Dead Space to sleep paralysis and more. So the main questions are going to be listed as numbers, and then there are going to be questions that are like 0 0.5, 0 0.9, and those simply represent questions that may not be as significant to the bigger questions. So when you watch the interview, that's what that means. As we saw in the preview for this interview, we have connections now for the Dead Space 4 movement. So we now have the momentum needed to drive our movement to succession. Hopefully these connections let me reach out to other voice actors within Dead Space or the producers or the creators behind the series. That would be an awesome opportunity and I'm currently trying to work on that. In the past, I have interviewed Gunnar Wright who is the main voice actor behind Isaac Clarke from Dead Space 2 and 3. So if you want, you can go check that out. Also in the description below, we have a petition for Dead Space 4. We have a Discord group for Dead Space. And we also have a Facebook fan page called Dead Space Universe dedicated to passionate Dead Space fans. I have left timestamps in the description below. So if you want to skip around and see all the questions, by all means, feel free to do so. Thank you to everyone for your extreme patience. I know this interview was long overdue, but as promised, here it is. Sit back enjoy if you enjoy the interview please remember to give the video a thumbs up and once again guys you are in the right spot for your dead space content on youtube enjoy the interview i have 15 questions did you get the questions i sent you everything was okay with that yeah i think i have 14 of the 15 but that's great oh, so yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. so yeah the 15th question i'll save for last i'm just a passionate dead space fan i'm just trying to get dead space for into existence because visual games and you know the companies they're doing their own star wars thing so i'm just trying to build up as much dead space hype as possible i interviewed gunner Wright already and he was an awesome person to interview with so i'm very yeah. very honored that you decided to take time out of your day to uh come on and answer some questions i know your schedule is super busy so i really appreciate it oh my god i my my pleasure i'm i'm thank you for asking me it's uh it's been a while so i i hope that i can live up to some of these <laughs> Let's start off with the first question. So how did you get into voice acting and how did you get the role of Nicole? It was just a regular audition, actually. It was, um, you know, I went into an audition and through my agent here in California. Yeah. And I, uh, I was, at, I mean, thinking back, it's quite a, been quite a while, but I, mm. I remember being asked to play her in a, in a somewhat creepy way. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't think they revealed at that point that she was a hallucination or a ghost. But the first thing that came to mind, uh, was the child ghost, uh, called Joseph in the movie, the changeling, the 1970s George C. Scott, yeah. which is my favorite scary ghost movie. I did my best impersonation of Joseph and <laughs> went from there. <laughs> So when you hear make us whole, it's basically Joseph. Oh, <laughs> really? That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> did you know it was like for a video game or you just went in completely I blind? Yeah. I, I did know it was a video game, but okay. but I didn't know what mocap meant. Okay. I didn't really know what anything really entailed. <laughs> to me, it was just like any other audition. Do you okay. know? Yeah, yeah. If you remember, what were your thoughts going over the script for Dead Space 2? Do you remember much of that? I, I well, Okay, so at the beginning, I... I now, again, I could be wrong, but I don't remember that we received much information about Dead Space 1, and I hadn't played it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I I remember thinking it was kind of confusing. Uh -huh. We later got a lot of uh, background information, but yeah. uh, right off I, I, the first read-through, I, I, I don't really think I understood why I was hunting him. Mm -hmm. So I, I found okay. Nicole both you know, terrifying mm -hmm. and sweet okay. and aggressive and relentless yes. and I, I i thought she was more or less the protector of the heart of the marker hmm, okay. it wasn't until later that i understood that she was being used mm -hmm. by the marker as a hallucination against isaac so oh. when reading a script for the first time i you know you just tend to, to pull out the instincts or the qualities that that i can personally relate to so you know, i mean i guess sometimes in life you do what you need to do to get what you want and sometimes at the cost of hurting those that we love the most. So mm -hmm. it's obviously an extreme yeah. uh, version of that. And of course, I don't mean it quite literally, but um, it was a little confusing at first. But again, that's because I didn't have the background. 
Gotcha. What was it like voice acting someone that was already dead and was supposed to scare players? Okay, well, I felt like this is a role that I've been rehearsing for my entire life uh-huh. <laughs> because I loved to terrify my younger brother when we were growing up. Oh, yeah? So, oh, yeah, because uh, I would, I would uh, sometimes perch on the top of his closet shelf like a gargoyle. Wow. And uh, at night, right before he was about to go to sleep, and then when I would hear that deep breathing, deep sleep sound... Uh-huh. I would leap from the perch onto him. Wow. Sometimes I'm perched up there for quite some time, of wow. course. Okay. And then and then I would do the same thing under his bed. So, you know, he would he I, he got used to the idea that I could be in his closet, so he would just open his closet every night, mm-hmm. make sure I wasn't there, so then I would find different hiding spots. So one of those hiding spots would be, you know, under his bed, of course, pretty obvious. And then I would do the same thing, wait for him, wait, wait for the, uh, the deep breathing, and then grab his leg, that kind of thing. Anything to terrify him. It was the best. I was a very wicked sister in you, that way. Do you still, like, patiently wait for him to, you know, go to bed and you jump on him like a gargoyle now? Or? <laughs> I don't live with him anymore, unfortunately. Um, but if I did, I would definitely, like, yeah, I would reenact certain moments of our childhood, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> What were the hardest parts and your favorite parts in playing Nicole? Well, I think, you know, initially, again, I think the hardest part was just understanding her journey and why she was doing what she was doing. Of course, this was made available to me, you know, as we went along. But uh, I think I remember this being a little difficult to wrap my head around at first. Um, But my my favorite parts were scaring the shit out of him, the scare tactics, the startling him, hissing at him. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, as an adult, I don't get away with doing this as much as I guess I would like to, but so given the opportunity to do something like this. In the sound booth, like, like do the people who make the game, like, do they ask you to sound a certain way or do they say like, sound like the exorcist or sound like you're growling to make all these different types of unique sounds? Like, how does a director kind of coach you to do something like that? I don't remember if it was specific, as specific as that. Uh-huh. I think it was more like, how would you do this? Mm. And how would do it. And if, if, if it worked, then they went with that. And gotcha. if it was, if they wanted a different turn, um, they would maybe guide it and, you know, be uh-huh. more terrifying in this way, or, or it's more of a ghost like character quality to her. Or now she's pouncing on him here. Mm-hmm. So it's more aggressive as opposed to like creepy, do you know? Yeah. So I think those were more of the the adjectives as opposed to um, pulling it from, from any genre per se, like, like or any specific film or anything. One that resonated always the most with me was, was uh, The Changeling. Yeah. Joseph from the change like mm-hmm. that's what I went with and just uh, did whatever kind of came up naturally around that. So you think they gave you a lot of creative freedom? Oh yeah, oh for sure. And the, the director David Footman was amazing with yeah. that. Yeah, they they really did. They they you know they they provide us with a lot of visuals and they provided us with a lot of um, backstory. You know, uh-huh. as we got to these things. But yeah, absolutely they did. They were they were pretty amazing with that. I love David Footman. Awesome. Yeah. And you recently went back and replayed or, or watched Dead Space 2 to get a better feel for the game. How was it like hearing yourself in a game? Was that kind of weird? Different? Yeah, you know, you never sound like what you think you sound like, right? Yeah. So, uh, and my hair is long now, my hair was short then, and oh. I, I don't know, my, my friend that was with me was like, oh, no, no, that's you. And I'm like, are you, are you sh- her? How do you, how do you know for sure? And he's like, listen to you. Of course it's you. But to me, again, like I, I yeah, I, I can't hear myself in myself. And I also find it kind of hard to listen to myself in general. <laughs> you know, like if I'm watching myself on film or TV, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I've got such a critical eye and I'm so self critical about like so many things that I, I, I do find it somewhat difficult, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, but, but then when you're playing something completely outside of yourself, like when yeah. the what, the hissing sound and there was the ghost like qualities that's far more engaging to me and far more fun for me to watch because it's mm-hmm. stepping outside of myself which is far more interesting awesome dead space 2 is probably in my opinion it's my favorite game in the entire series as well as many other fans so how does it feel being part of something that's so big like dead space it's so great and it's kind of mind-blowing to me i mean i mean i think it's I, I I still hear from the odd person now and again about it, and you know I've said 
Yeah, I love that. I love that. And they and they send, you know, I, I was, was I received a bunch of paraphernalia right at the top when we finished it. We went to Comic-Con that year. Yeah. And uh, so they gave us a bunch of stuff. And uh, and so I would send it to these people because I, I don't know what to do with it. Like, for me, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't I, I don't. I live in a small apartment. I don't have any place for it. Mm. So if it means something to someone else, I'd far rather pass that on. And so, yeah, it was, it's, I love it. I love being a part of something that is, has that much impact on people for sure. If given the chance, would you alter anything from Nicole's character? Oh, I don't know. I hesitate in answering this question because I, I, I guess in playing the game, I, I too had a lot of questions. Like for example, I interpreted the, the the static coming out of her eyes and her mouth as as Nicole like attempting to suck the soul out of Isaac, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I know that there's a lot of different interpretations on that. And then I guess so initially I'm I, I want clarity on that. Like I guess my first reaction to that question is to say I want to understand that more as I'm playing it. Mm-hmm. However, I don't know if that's necessary. I think it's, in thinking about it a little further, I think it's better that it's more ambiguous. I mean, you know, it can Uh mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, and so let it be that. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I would rather, I would love to have different uh, tactics and and, uh, different ways in which I could manipulate him and and seduce him maybe and and play in gameplay and that kind of thing and maybe add an element more of like a sexual element to it would be fun to play with as well what do you think dead space 2 it's just the marker using nicole to guide isaac to the end so nicole is never really there you're not playing the real nicole it's just someone that looks like nicole right right right. if you look at the necromorphs they used to be humans and the marker did conversions and they influenced them and then they turned them into all these horrific creatures she looks like a normal person and then she starts freaking out and twitching but she's not like a necromorph you know like she's like a normal person i guess she's the furthest a human can look before they become a necromorph and the marker always tries to disguise nicole as as like the real nicole for isaac to guide through it's very deceptive of the marker to make Nicole look like that. Oh, sure. And I think maybe the staticky thing is like, again, right before maybe the marker like loses patience with Isaac and then she like freaks out and becomes like a necromorph. But it is all hallucination, so there never really is anything there. Right. But I think it's just the marker trying to influence Isaac in as much as possible in any way it can. Right. So so I guess I would like to play more with that. Like just have more opportunity to to play with that more. Gotcha. You know, in different ways. Maybe even the seducing part would be interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um just the manipulation of 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 Nicole in general as a hallucination. Uh-huh. Um, to to have different tactics in which she does that would be interesting. So not just in the scare tactics, but also in in other ways. Speaking of revisiting, when Dead Space 4 is eventually greenlit by EA and Visceral Games, would you reprise your role or want to reprise your role of Nicole for the game or maybe pick up a new character to voice act or maybe both? And do you think Nicole has a role in a fourth game? I mean, I would love to, given Mm -hmm. the chance. I would love to uh, pick her up again. And, you know, they've obviously gone through such a crazy journey to see what else they can do with her at that point be interesting but yeah i'd be open to playing someone else as well but i think yeah i would uh, ideally love to play nicole again awesome so if dead space 4 was in production and and like visceral games approached you again you would be down to voice act in a dead space 4 a hundred thousand percent (laughs) awesome If there were a live action Dead Space movie, would you play as Nicole? I would love to again, a hundred thousand percent. Awesome, yes. awesome. There was talk about that a while ago. What do you know what's happening with that at this stage? <sighs> I mean, I, I, I don't know if it's, like, video game rights and, like, studio rights and, like, what EA wants to do. A couple of years ago, Dead Space was a big IP, and it was really popular. And then the third game came out, and EA wanted to make it more action-packed to cater to audiences like Battlefield and Call of Duty. But Dead Space, at its heart, is a survival horror game. It's not action. And I'm not saying Dead Space 3 was a bad game. I really enjoy that game, but it's not what really made Dead Space special. So right now, Dead Space is not too popular because it's been kind of dormant for a while the last game that came out was back in 2013 i would love to see a dead space movie again and i think it would be a fantastic movie it could be like a mix between like silent hill and like alien and the thing and uh, Mm. just a bunch of creepy stuff and the thing that movie freaks me out the original one freaks me out man like tentacles and stuff i i 
freaks me out. And like the dog scene, that was disgusting. <laughs> very, very creative back then in the day. So I think a Dead Space movie would be fantastic. I'm actually a film major. I would love to make one myself if I ever, you know, am rich enough to afford the rights. EA has claimed that the IP of Dead Space is not done. It's not canceled. They're just focusing on other projects. That's really why I'm trying to bring Dead Space back into the norm and get it more noticed again. So I would love to see a movie. And I think that would be a great way to kickstart it. Yeah. I wonder, yeah, uh, interesting that it's interesting how, like, the approach on these things, isn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, because I guess the instinct, uh, at least to me, would be that, you know, you, you do four, or at least if you're going to complete three, then at that point you release a movie or you get right on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, there must be some sort of a strategy in the wait. Maybe it's just to see how, how badly people want it. I mean, I think it would do really well. I mean, I, I mean, oh, I mean... Because most video game movies are pretty are, are pretty bad. I guess that would might be like one concern. But I think with the right people, and that's with anything, I think they can make a great thing. But I think the IP is so interesting. And I'm not much of a survival horror fan, but I really love Dead Space because of the story and, and like how fun of it it is to play. I would love to see that. Do you do any film at all? Like TV, commercials, movies? Yeah, I'm actually on location right now. and I'm in Hawaii right now. Wow. Um, I'm shooting a, a series for ABC. I'm doing several episodes on that, That's and then yeah, but yeah, no, definitely, I do, I do, uh, I do film and TV as much as I possibly can. So you've done TV and like other mediums and gaming as well. So was it different playing a video game character compared to maybe a character in a TV show? Oh, totally in every single way. I mean, there's you know you go your your costume is basically a wetsuit with little balls on it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's refreshing in the way that you don't have to ever think about you know your hair, your makeup, your clothes, or anything like that. And also, you don't resemble the character as much as you might think. We all sort of look like that, sort of, sort but of. not really, not really that much. And then also, you perform in sort of like a stadium type of a set. Yeah. So there's no real set to speak of, and there's no real props to speak of, and there's uh, so a lot is left to your imagination. I mean, you know, the EA will give you like this is what it is supposed to look like but then you know and like this is where this is supposed to be but so a lot of it is just working just with the other actor right yeah so all that is very very different and uh but kind of fun because of all that too <laughs> right yeah what was it like working with Gunnar Wright? Like, were you in that stadium with him or that studio with the Oh, I love Wars, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's been a while since we shot this, but I did run into him a few years ago in an audition, and, awesome. you know, we were paired up together. Aww. So, you know, he is still, like, he's the calm, dashing gentleman that you think he would be. He's lovely. He's, like, salt of the earth lovely. Yeah. And he's level, and he's quite beautiful, and he's... He is he, pretty sexy. Course, yeah, and he, more so in real life than in, in, in Dead Space, the yeah. Dead Space version of him. Yeah, and yeah. he, you know, he drives a motorcycle and doesn't really do much for me, but a lot of people yeah. uh, think that's pretty hot, so <laughs> there's that. But yeah, he, he's he's amazing. He's he's a very, like I said, calm, grounded, awesome. salty guy. Yeah. Good stuff. Are you guys still in contact or are you guys busy with your own projects right now? Mm -mm. We, I mean, uh, you know, other than running into him that one time a few years ago, I haven't seen him or heard from him since. Mm -hmm. So not really, no. I mean, you know, I'm on Facebook with Sunita. Oh, yeah. Henry from years ago. Also with Chuck Beaver and Kate Lashford and David Footman, all that were part, like David was the was the uh, director and so, and Kate and Chuck were um, awesome. on the production side of it. So, and Ian as well, Ian Milham. So loosely in contact, you know, mm -hmm. via Facebook and such, but um, no, haven't seen, I don't think any of them aside from just the odd bump in here and there. I saw Kurt actually, Kurt Cornelius I also saw. Okay, that's cool. What do you think is the best part of Isaac and Nicole's relationship? What was your favorite part of that? Oh my goodness. I think that, I think this is his dedication to her, his complete commitment to her, yeah. his refusal to believe that she's what she presents herself to be at the stage. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's elements of that that I certainly can relate to, you know? Mm -hmm. Being in a relationship that's starting to go sour, but you're like, no, 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 let's get back to where we were. Let's get back to where we were. Yeah. This isn't the person I, I fell in love with. No, 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 no. And then you just, you refuse to believe it until you're forced to <laughs> see, see it for what it really is. 
So I think that human element, you know, yeah. as demented and as twisted and as overblown as it is, is mm -hmm. is relatable on some level, you know. Mm -hmm. It makes it certainly makes him a sympathetic character, right? Because yeah. you're like, oh God, dude, stop, don't, 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 yeah. and then he does. Nicole was haunting Isaac, which in the game is your boyfriend. But if you, Tanya, were to die, who would you want to haunt and for what purpose? And what kind of hallucinations would you give to that person? Oh my god, this is the best question ever. Who do you hate uh, or like or love? Or just I think fuck? that, yeah, I know, like initially I was like, well, my brother, obviously, mm -hmm. so he could be reminded of how terrifying I was as a sister. But no, in truth, I think that if it was a scary ghost, I, I, I wouldn't. And I, and I, and I mean that because and I say that because I myself am terrified of being visited by a ghost like if I'm ever in a old hotel or a sleeping in a room that just feels like there's something else in there I may get a point of sitting on that bed and having a brief conversation mm -hmm. you know with whatever may or may not be there and I just simply say I respect that you're here <laughs> but please respect the fact that I don't want to see feel or hear you please respect that okay thank you and then I do that every night before I go to bed. And so far, so good. But I was, I will say this though, I, I was staying in this room in Vancouver at one point years ago. And I was going through a really, really hard time. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was going through, like, I, I'd just gone through this horrible, I just lost somebody very close to me. Yeah. You know, I, I think in, the, in sometimes as you do, Time goes by and you don't really deal with it because it's just too shocking. And then and then you have some quiet time and it all kind of surfaces, right? It all comes yeah. Yeah. comes out. So I'd wake up sobbing and it was just it was just it was such a sad point in my life. And I remember at one point, I guess it must have been a ghost or a spirit or whatever. Um, but it was in the it was something I felt more than I I saw. And it was this essence of this old woman just whispering in my ear that it was all good, like it was all okay, and that it was very, very comforting. And so I guess to answer that question, I would also say, so if I, would, if I were to be someone unlike Nicole and someone of that nature, uh -huh. I guess it would be to my mom, you know? I think that um, certainly if I ever died, I mean, it would be horrible for her yeah. but in general just to you know as as, as our parents get older and I think it must be scary looking back on your life and wondering if you've done everything you wanted to do and and if you've been everyone you've wanted to be am I enough and you know is is uh is this it and seeing people you know and love around you dying and I don't know yeah. I just get getting closer to that time is scary for older people and I think that I would want to, if anything, just be a voice and a presence that was felt more than seen uh -huh. and reassure her and to comfort her uh -huh. uh, as, she, as she grows older and to just remind her of how amazing she is. You ever have sleep paralysis? Because maybe that's how you heard the voice when you were in your bed. <laughs> um, so I, I am an insomniac. Okay. And I have been since, I don't know, I was a teenager. Yeah. You know, and I go through waves of it. It's not constant, but I, I there are certain years that I feel like, oh, I didn't even, I don't think I even slept that year, you know, and, and so it has gone through really bad stages. I'm kind of an insomniac too. I do have trouble sleeping and I have encountered sleep paralysis before, so I can kind of understand where you're coming from or maybe fully, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty terrifying stuff. And I've heard of cases where like people do hear voices and like they hear staticky. Maybe that's what Nicole is like a sleeping paralysis nightmare type of thing mm. but uh i mean there's been cases where people like it gets pretty bad to where like you feel like someone's like right next to you and like they're breathing on you or like they're touching you luckily i never got that creeped out by sleep paralysis or, or like never went that far the worst that i ever saw was like demonic looking stuff in my room and like it looks so oh. real because like you're stuck in the rem stage like you're still dreaming but you're awake so it's like you're literally drugged or like you're you're like hallucinating and like when you try to break out of it you can't because your body's frozen so you're like your mind keeps racing and, and like you get more panicked and more panicked and that just makes the hallucination worse and worse and worse and worse oh that's awful yep. that's awful mm -hmm. but is this after playing a game oh no this is a real life thing that people suffer from actually right right, right. but this isn't like post anything like, oh this no isn't... i mean i mean 
I, I guess sleep paralysis, like, represents, like, maybe a lot of stress in your life. I know, like, when a succubus approaches a guy or something, or, like, even a girl, it, it might mean, like, you need some romance in your life or, like, some love or something. Like, you're mm -hmm. missing out on that. So, like, the first time I got sleep paralysis, it came out of nowhere, and it terrified the hell out of me. I literally couldn't sleep for, like, four days straight. I was absolutely terrified. And oh. uh, it's creepy, man. Like, you literally see a demonic, like, I mean... That, that's what I saw. I saw a demonic, like, really tall figure. It was, like, a decaying, skeletal woman. It was fucking... It was really Oh, my God. Terrifying. Oh, my God. Oh my yeah, God. I know, I know. And, like, it, it looked so real. It looked like... It was in my room. It was walking towards me. And, like, you can't even move. It's the creepiest shit ever. If you're interested in me, like, documentary on, like, sleep paralysis. But the cool thing about sleep paralysis is you can actually control it, and you can turn it into lucid dreaming. Do you know what that is? Um, lucid dreaming in the sense that you can actually move at that point? Uh, or... Kind of. If you control your sleep paralysis, you can eventually dream, and then you can dream of whatever you want, because you're going to be consciously awake, but your body is... Well, your mind's awake, but your body is not. So you're still, like, frozen, and, and, like, you can't move. But rather than panicking and, like, seeing really weird stuff, you can now control your dream. So if you wanted to, you could, like, fly across the globe, and you could actually be flying like iron man but you're but, really? you're, but but like you're dreaming like you can control everything at the same time though if you have like a pessimistic mind you could also imagine yourself being devoured by a shark and you would actually see that got to be careful with those thoughts and not be a pessimist so so have you have you uh mastered that have you you know have you experienced that? i've had like i said i've had sleep paralysis before and it's creepy because in order for you to lucid dream successfully, you have to go through paralysis first. I don't really like the feeling of being in sleep paralysis. I've tried a couple times to actually activate it. Usually the best way to do it is when you lie on your back and like you sleep that way. Most of the time, you, like your body will lock in place from that. Cause now whenever I sleep, it's either on my side or on my stomach. I almost never sleep on my back anymore because of the paralysis. I guess I could go back and try, but I guess I'm just too freaked out to go through that first initial scary step because if i don't master it i'm going to be stuck in that horrific you know stage. i know it's when so it messed happen? up how many years ago um i'd say like at least three um i mean like one time it got so bad like if i went into my bed within a minute my body would lock up and i would hallucinate oh my god was something really horrible happening in your life at that point or no it really wasn't it was just i mean maybe i i don't really have the greatest memory i, I don't think anything happened really bad but it just came out of nowhere really and it was it was very weird because it, it again it's like you're literally on drugs but you're sleeping you're completely sober and you are literally tripping balls it's really creepy i hope that never happens to you again that yeah, is that would be nice i mean awful. so far it hasn't happened to me at all as long as i sleep on my side or on my that stomach i should be okay <sighs> But, oh God! Yeah, good thing you have not experienced that. Hopefully, you never have. No, I, I have felt like frozen, but not in a bad way. Do you know? Like I've yeah. never, I've never seen anything like that. Which, okay. well, thank God that that sounds like the worst. It's it's pretty terrifying. Um, if you ever are in a paralysis situation, one thing that really helps to get out of it is wiggle your toe or your finger. Eventually, you'll be able to wake your body up that way, and then you'll immediately spring out of paralysis but like sometimes it got actually pretty bad like one example was like i was in bed and i woke up and i got out of paralysis and then i like I got, I got off my bed i walked downstairs made breakfast talked to my mom and then i woke up in my bed again oh. and, and then i got out and then i did that like three times I just, it kept repeating it. Like I was locked in paralysis for like an hour and I thought I was literally doing, going about my life, but I was still in bed sleeping for like four times in a row. So that was kind of weird. Yeah. I just read this script, actually, this horror script that that, that, that exact same thing just happened, the per happened to the uh, protagonist in the, uh -huh. in the script. Freaky. That reminds me too of this. This one time I was reading uh, lines with my boyfriend, yeah. um, right before going on set, and uh, for Dead Space too, right? Yeah. And so we were just running the lines and fell asleep right after that. And I guess, according to him, I sat up. I abruptly sat up in the middle of the night and went <sighs> like that, and my eyes were wide. And and um, <laughs> and Mike, my my boyfriend, was like, "What? What? What?" And uh, I guess I turned to him and said, it's just the demons. And then I went back to sleep. Interesting. Yeah. No Maybe recollection. Maybe you were trying to make him whole. Maybe I was trying to make him whole. Maybe. Bring it on home. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Poor guy. Um, 
Yeah, but he's still with you, right? Yeah, it's not the last time I've done that either. Okay. I've done certain things like that that I have no recollection of as well, that he's just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, like screaming in the middle of the night, that type of horrible, terrifying thing that, you know, I just go right back to sleep, but he's left freaking out. Like, just recently, we're in New Orleans. We were in kind of a sketchy hotel, and uh, he and with our dog, and he was not feeling that comfortable with the whole deal. Anyway, and I was like, oh, relax, please. I've been far worse than this. And, you know, some conference going on. So everything was booked. So we were just sort of stuck with whatever we could get. He brought his golf clubs in from the car and put them against the wall. But I guess whatever he was saying, all this panic that he was sort of, you know, feeling uncomfortable with. He he was uncomfortable leaving the dog in the hotel room. He wasn't comfortable, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, in the middle of the night, Mm -hmm. um, I guess because I absorbed some of this panic, I'm dead asleep and the golf clubs fell on the ground from the wall to the ground, wow. right? Just the, just the, but just the sound of it, I sat up and screamed like, like, you know, we were being invaded. Yeah. Right. Wow. And, and the poor dog and Mike were like, oh, what, 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 what? And, and it took a while for me to calm down until I realized what it was. Cause I, I didn't know where, you know, we were on the, we'd been on the road for a while. I had no idea where I was, what was going on. Blah, blah, blah. Finally calmed down and then just fell right back to sleep. And again, he's left all night just freaking out, panicking, like, Damn. oh, my God. <laughs> what was that? So, uh, yeah, poor him. Going back to Nicole for Dead Space 2, you mentioned how you would relate back to certain experiences to play like that creepy character. But she also had a dual nature in her because she was luring Isaac at the end of the game. But she was also a bad guy. How did you prepare for the role again? But like... In this case, switching back between like, oh, you're a good person, you're trying to lure him in, and then you're being deceptive. So like, you had like a split personality. Was that something that you kind of uh, related to something like you remember in the in, in, in the past, or how did you go about that? Yeah, I think it's you know, I mean, when it comes to extremes like that, I think playing with opposites in any in any role is always really fun, and mm-hmm. and you can always pull from uh, real experiences to a certain degree, right? Yeah. I, I mean. You know, any any emotion that is strong, like if your love is very strong for someone, your hate for them can equally just crop up to be hateful at times. And obviously not the predominant emotion involved, but but it's there, right? Mm, yeah. So I love my boyfriend to death and sometimes I want to strangle him. Yeah. I hate working out, but sometimes I love it so much because the pain is so good. I love it. Do you know what I mean? So the duality is in all of us, right? Uh-huh. And then I think that giving into the permission uh-huh. of uh, living that out is, is a gift. Uh that we get to play with and to look at it like that and to play with it on those levels. Just tapping into what you already know deep down, I think. Uh Uh-huh. You mentioned before you like to work out, but you like pain. Like, are you doing, like, improper form? Like, that type of pain? Oh, no, I don't like to work out. I hate to work out. Oh, you hate it. Okay. Uh, Yeah, I, 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 no, generally don't. Okay. Not a fan. So it's a pain in the ass, not that you're in pain. No, I, I don't like it, but then I love the pain of it sometimes. Like if I force myself to do it, sometimes the pain is so good. Yeah. So it's like that love-hate mix there. Okay. You know? I guess so. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, we pretty much racked up all the questions, except there's about one more question, which was that 15th question I had at the very end. As I spoke about before, I have started a Dead Space 4 movement. I'm trying to echo this game into existence. We have a Discord page, a Facebook page, we have a petition. We're pushing it. We're calling EA Visual Games every day. We're a peaceful protest because we don't want to get annoying. But at the same time, we want to make sure our voices are heard. That's mm-hmm. amazing. You yeah. guys are amazing. Because okay. you know that happens because of you guys, right? Uh-huh. Things happen because of you guys. So yeah. that's... And yes, I'm totally on board with anything you need. Really? Okay, that's great because I I, I had a follow-up question to this 15. I was wondering, and you don't have to even though you just said you would, would you help us push our movement in various forms of social media? Of course. Yes. Really awesome. Because like I feel like someone who's actually been in the Dead Space games, like you have way more connections than we do. And I'm not here to be like, oh, do everything for me. You know, you go about your thing. But I think having a voice actor, you know, part of this movement would be so awesome. I don't know. Maybe you could reach out to David or like other voice actors because I reach out to them too. But, you know, I'm just a random person. You're someone that's been with them. You've worked with them. Awesome. I, I, and I certainly could like I'll, I'll put it out there and I'll ask where things are at and I can yeah 
Um, let me know what you need specifically. Yeah, and I'll you send you an email. The email or whatever, and and uh, I'm happy to um, forward stuff on awesome. and um, to reach out to them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Hearing that is going to make a lot of Dead Space fans that watch my channel freak out in a really awesome, positive way. Oh, well, good. They're because gonna freak it happens out. because of you guys, right? All of this happens because of you guys. That's, so yeah. come yeah. on. Only, you know, accommodate, like, absolutely, I'll accommodate in any way I possibly can. Thank and I'm, so I'm also on Twitter, and I'm on, uh, I just recently got on Instagram, too. So I, awesome. I'm in contact with any of those guys via Twitter oh. or Instagram right now. But, you know, but definitely I have, you know, I have them via Facebook and everything and awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I have a big, big old grin on my face right now. Oh, good. Well, that good. Is, I'm sure they'll love, but the great. thing is I'm doing it because I think they would love to hear that too. I'm, I'm guessing. Look, so? they'll let me know if they're like, oh, stop it. Just stop it. Enough is enough. Uh -huh. that, that, you know, and we'll go from there. But I, I would imagine that they would welcome that as well. Awesome. I would think. That is great. Well, what's the reaction you guys are getting from them? Yeah. Well, awesome, Tanya. I really appreciate you coming on, answering a couple questions. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Thank you so much for that last bit of uh, helping us spread the movement. That means so much to us. Oh, oh my God, of course. Well, thank you guys for playing and for, for you know, sticking with it and and for loving the game as much as you do. Yeah, and, and like the good thing is, like, Visceral Games right now, they're making a Star Wars game, so I don't think we're going to have any Dead Space news until, like, 2018, maybe 2019. But right now, we have all the time in the world to build a discussion, to build up this community, to make our voices heard. So even though I'm not expecting Dead Space 4 to be announced tomorrow or even next year, but the goal is to eventually get the series back into production like it was before. This is a big stepping stone, so thank you so much. Of course. Of course. My pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, awesome, Tanya. Before we uh, end the call, is there anywhere that we can find you? Like, do you want to plug any of your social media? Yeah, sure. I'm on uh, Twitter right now as Tanya Clark 22 mm -hmm. And I'm at, uh, on Instagram, I think it's the same thing. Okay. God, I'm so bad with this crap. But no, that's cool. I'll probably fine. pop you an email and then I'll put those in, into the video. I'll also link you this video when it's uh, up on the channel. I guess one more question, because I'm curious about this. You're working on that new ABC show. Can you give away any details, or is that all classified information? I would love to, but I can't. Okay, we no have to problem. All these, like, non-disclosure agreement things, yeah. and... Uh, just and curious. as soon as you know what, as soon as I can, I will. Awesome. But I can't right now. Is it airing later this year or, or like next year? I don't, you know what? I don't even know. Okay. I would guess this year, but I mean, I don't know. Just curious. So good to talk to you. Thank you for your patience with everything. And let no me know problem. if you need anything, okay? Wow, that makes me very... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Of course, of course, of course. Thank you for everything that you do. Oh, no problem. I, I aim to please. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day, honey. Have a great one. Thanks. You too, honey. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching. My name is James. I'm Jacoby Rising. Subscribe for some more Dead Space content, Dead Space 4 coverage, and I'll see you next time.